So here we have a problem. We are trying to determine the empirical formula of a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it's being determined by what's known as a combustion analysis. So a combustion analysis means that our compound in question, which in this case contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen of unknown formula, is giving us, we're trying to figure out what x, y, and z are. So a combustion analysis was burned as our indication that it's combustion analysis means that we react it with oxygen and it forms water and carbon dioxide. Now obviously we can't balance this chemical equation because we don't know what X, Y, and Z are and we also have no idea how much oxygen was reacted. What we do know though is we have 0.475 grams of our original substance and it burned and it formed 0.298 grams of water. And all of the hydrogen in the entire reaction, all of the, react all of the hydrogen in our reactant turned into our water. So for us to calculate mass percent of hydrogen, that's simply equal to the mass of hydrogen in the sample divided by the mass of the sample. We know that the mass of the sample is 0.475 and so we just have to figure out of what of that 0.475 how much of it is hydrogen. Well we know the mass of water that was formed and so we know we have 0.298 grams of water and since we know the mass percent of hydrogen in water we can figure out our grams of hydrogen from that were formed in our water. So it's 0.298 grams, knowing our mass percent of hydrogen with our water, whatever that is, we can figure out what mass of hydrogen was sort of formed. Well that mass of hydrogen, since all of the hydrogen went from our reactant to our product water, that mass of hydrogen in our water product is equal to the mass of hydrogen in our original sample. So that will give us our mass percent of hydrogen. For mass percent of carbon in the sample, we need to know essentially the same thing as we did in mass percent of hydrogen, only that's the mass of carbon in the sample divided by the mass of the sample. And again, the mass of our sample is 0.475. Now in this case, all of the carbon in our reaction all reacted and went into carbon dioxide. And I know that we had 0.5 972 grams of carbon dioxide in our product. So since all of the carbon from our reaction, our reactant, went into the carbon dioxide, and we know the mass of carbon dioxide, knowing the mass percent of carbon in CO2 allows us to get our mass of carbon. So that's mass of carbon in our product, but since all of the carbon from our original reactant went into carbon dioxide, that mass of carbon in our carbon dioxide is also, or is equal to, the mass of carbon in the original sample. So, knowing our mass of carbon dioxide, we can figure out the mass of carbon in our product, and the mass of carbon in our product is equal to the mass of carbon in our original reactant. And so we, now we have our mass percent of carbon in our original sample. Now, mass percent oxygen is just going to be slightly trickier, trickier because we can't say, oh, look, okay, we can figure out how much oxygen is in our water product, and we can figure out how much oxygen is in our carbon dioxide product, knowing the masses. But the problem is right there. We have no idea how much oxygen was sort of like in the air. Some of this oxygen in the water and the carbon dioxide comes from the oxygen in the original reactant. So we can't figure out the mass percent of oxygen in our reactant, in our reactant because we don't know how much oxygen, by the same method, because we don't know how much oxygen came from here. But since we know the mass percent of hydrogen and the mass percent of carbon, and we know that all three of them add up to 100%, that means that the mass of mass percent of oxygen is equal to 100 minus the mass percent carbon minus the mass percent hydrogen, whatever we figure out those to be. And then, of course, once we know the mass percents of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, we can take those mass percents, convert 
them into moles of each. So mass percent of each. We can convert that actually into a mass of each, which we convert into each element. Each element, which we convert into mass of each element, which we convert into moles of each element, which we convert into mole ratio, which gets us to our empirical formula.